Hello folks, welcome to another episode of Rooted Cosmic Soul. Well, this particular reading is um, Healing the Eye. The Eye and the Eye. Uh, finding Balance and Harmony for the Healing Wounded Healers. I'm going to explain quite a few things. How I'm defining Wounded Healer versus Healing Wounded Healer. Some identity clarifications in there. The transmuting the eye process of oracle reading comes with transmuting the eye deck and the layout. I created the deck and I created the layouts and I, the layouts are created based in and conjuring energy around sacred geometry. If you want to skip all that and you just want to get to the reading, there's timestamps in the description box. Doing a reading for a particular identity comes with some necessary clarifications in my opinion. I'm doing a reading for healing wounded healers. It's those of us who had a lot of trauma, a lot of grief are in the healing process. That trauma and grief has offered us the opportunity to be quite empathic, show a lot of empathy. And in a healing wounded healer, what I'm talking about are those of us who are intentionally on a journey of understanding the traumas and the experiences that we had allowed us now to be in a place where we can have empathy, compassion, and grace at a much deeper level and offer that back to the world. The healing part of that is like, you know, it's life is a journey. And with the experiences that a wounded healer experiences, the work to intentionally heal that is necessary so that when we are in the world, we're doing less harm to ourselves and to others. And so for me, that includes actively transmuting, actively doing shadow work, shadow work in terms of I'm calling in the parts of myself that are hidden deep and just simply trying to protect me. I'm not seeing them as something to be banished. Those parts again, help me with my empathy and my ability to see other wounded healers or folks who need a great deal of empathy, compassion, and grace. The healing part also means I'm learning how to have boundaries around that. I'm learning how to take care of myself. I'm learning the strength of vulnerability and the strength of seeking assistance and asking for help when I need it. And the strength of looking for things that will help my healing. Identifying as a wounded healer, I want us to be really careful. I'm a full supporter of identity when it's done in a transmuted way. So identity in a oppressive, suppressive, and controlling way will absolutely 100% box people there's an overculture of suppression, oppression, and control that uses identity to oppress, suppress, and control. Even the identities that we love uses all these identity boxes to separate us from each other, to box us in. And so transmuting means being able to see that and have choice and free will of what one wants to hold and what one doesn't. And so I'm not one of those people who's like, throw identity out the window and I don't see color. Blech. No, that's where I'm coming from, from this. I'm doing a reading for the healing wounded healer because that's my, it's my people. I do self identify as a healing wounded healer. And I'm learning what that means. I'm redefining it almost every day, but I know for sure that it means I want to spend my time offering ideas, considerations to other people on their path that may help heal them. That's why I started Rooted Cosmic Soul, because these things have really helped me heal. The consistent daily use of this idea of transmuting the eye is what has significantly catapulted me. So. In this oracle reading, I'm using what I call the Transmuting the Eye Oracle Deck. It's a deck that I created using concepts, ideas, tenets of transmuting. In my deck, those 22 cards of the Major Arcana are called Journey cards. And then there's 56 cards that are Pathway cards. I also created very specific layouts for using the Transmuting the Eye Oracle Deck. And they're based in the energy flow of sacred geometry, asking spirit to flow with us as we use that. And that's the energy that I'm conjuring that energy of the sacred geometry. This Oracle reading, healing the eye, finding balance and harmony for the healing wounded healer. We're using a fruit of life layout. The reading is going to offer considerations for what to focus on or what to bring into balance and harmony at each 
energy level, as you'll see within the fruit of life layout to support a balanced and harmonious states for the ever evolving journey of healing for wounded healers on earth. The fruit of life is made up of 13 circles that form the same pattern that makes up the circles of Metatron's cube. Those 13 circles represent the framework and fabric of reality. We will be asking spirit to offer guidance toward that inner wisdom, integrity, honesty, mastery, and a solid foundation to support an intentional healing journey. This really is meant for folks who are at that point of understand self-identifying as a, as a wounded healer and intentionally by choice on a healing journey. So my friend, I think that's enough. And next up is the actual reading. I hope that it is helpful to your journey. Remember that it's a collective reading. Use your discernment. Go with what supports you, helps you. Leave behind for others what doesn't. I think that's enough. Let's get into the reading. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my dog dreaming. Hey, baby boo-boo. Okay. See you in the reading. Welcome to a Transmuting the Eye Oracle reading. Today we're going to be reading for those who identify as healing wounded healers. And we'll be using the energy flow of the sacred geometry of the fruit of life. And we'll be asking spirit to... Give ideas, thoughts, considerations to be considered by those who identify as healing wounded healers that will help balance and harmonize, help you find balance and harmony on your current healing journey. Let's open up with um, asking spirit who, what energy is sort of flowing with folks uh on their healing journey at this time. You know, healing journeys are uh, multi-pronged, <laughs> lots of paths that come off of it, lots to unpack. Um, and uh, we're just looking at this moment right now, your healing journey at this moment. What god, goddess, or guardian is gonna hang out with us right now and give the healing wounded healers space and time. So I was going to ask for one, but two came out. So we'll go with it. <laughs> uh, the first one that fell out was Leah. Stand your ground. Let's see. Leah, stand your ground. And Amaratsu, no more hiding. Amaratsu, no more hiding. So let's start with Leah. And I am not familiar with Leah. So thank you for arriving. Stand your ground. Don't suffer in science. Ask for what you want. Leah is an Aboriginal Australi Australian water goddess and guardian of women. Looking down from the sky, she noticed a group of women digging for roots in the dry desert. The men in the village had created certain rules, so only they could leave the camp to get water. The women had to stay put, thirsty and dusty. Leah decided to intervene. She went into the mountains, dug her digging stick into the ground and discovered a water spring that turned into a river. The women now refreshed, formed their own community with Leah as their leader. You have an extremely giving and supportive nature. Everyone can always count on you to be there for them. You put others first. Go out of your way to understand their needs and bend over backwards to honor their requests. These are traits that often show up in empaths, healers, lightworkers, earth angels, intuitives, and sensitives. 
Goddess Leah is urging Goddess Leah is urging you to set some limits before you risk losing yourself under a pile of other people's needs, demands, and expectation. Leah smiles wildly. Leah smiles widely and assertively claims generous space for you by pushing her stick into the earth. She asks, are you a living saint? No. Are you being a doormat? Possibly. Do you have needs, dreams, and wishes of your own? Yes. Start putting yourself first. Ask for what you want. Ask for help and be open to receive it. You may feel uncomfortable to begin with, but my waters will enliven you. Together we'll clear stagnant patterns and find fertile new ground. What a wonderful card to open up a reading for healing wounded healers to find balance and harmony. The invocation for Leah is, I claim my space in the universe. I stand up for myself. Ashe, thank you, Leah. And then also wanted to be here with us is Amaratsu. Amaratsu, there you are. Amaratsu, no more hiding. Come out of the cave, shine brilliantly. Amaratsu is a supreme Japanese Shinto sun goddess and daughter of the creator god Inzanaki. Her name means great shining heaven. Japanese emperors are said to, ha to be descended from Amaratsu and she's the highest deity in Japan. Shinto legend relates how Amaratsu retreated into a cave when her brother Su Suzanu began neglecting his divine role and creating mayhem. So important was Amaratsu's light that her disappearance plunged heaven and earth into disastrous darkness. Desperate for her to emerge, the deities created rituals to entice her out, including a mirror placed at the mouth of the cave. Amaratsu saw her shining light in the reflection and never hid herself away again. You're an introspective soul with a deep and multi-layered inner life. You need time to process and reflect on life's events. Private space is vital for your well-being. It can feel safe and familiar to keep yourself closeted away, but Amaratsu is asking you to share more of your beautiful light and wisdom. You have a special energy that needs to be seen, so don't hide it. What do you fear might happen if you reveal your true spirit? Does it feel as if your energy may be somehow damaged or destroyed if it's brought out into the open? Or perhaps that you'll be hurt, judged, or misunderstood? Even if this has happened before, Amaratsu wants to restore your trust. She understands your fears about coming out of the dark cave and offers you her hand. Come out, shining one, she says. Remove your cloak so we can receive your inner light. You can be an important guide for others. It's safe and trustworthy out here, and you'll be met with love, respect, and gratitude for sharing what's inside your heart. Amaratsu's invocation is, I reveal what's in my heart, and it's received with love. Thank you, Amaratsu. So before I uh, get to the transmuting the eye oracle cards, I, I want to say I think it's really beautiful that two aspects showed up for us today um, that I can see being something for healing wounded healers to consider if this if this energy is speaking to you, right? And remember, this is a collective reading. So take what works, leave what doesn't. Use your discernment. But what I love about Leah standing, uh, st being here and um, stand your ground, being her mantra, is that I think for a wound for a healing wounded healer, um, consider you know where are the places where you you know you're moving still in the healing and so. There's places where you still need to slow down enough to consider what works for you and what doesn't work for you. 
and not default to the to the behaviors that we that you might have used um, before starting to transmute your path, right? Starting to see the places that oppression, suppression, and control has caused you trauma. Um, and now you're on the healing path uh, because you deserve space to be. You deserve space to explore, um, be in your healing. And then I think on the other side of that is when you're further along in the healing journey, um, don't forget that you can, that you've healed, right? To remember that you've healed and that you can step into the light when you're ready. Um, and that sometimes, um, sometimes rituals get made and we don't even realize rituals are getting made. And so we could be spending a lot of time hiding ourselves out, um, in the healing process and then, um, habit gets infused in that and we're doing all this healing. And then we have to remember to that we've healed, right? Or, you know, and healing is never ending, but there's aspects of healing and that we just might be ready to step out into the world again, because as healing wounded healers, if you're here and you're identifying as that, you know, the world really needs a lot more compassion, love, grace, empathy. And I believe that's going to come from healing wounded healers. So when you're ready, consider, you know, what do you need to step out of your cave and step into the light? And when you step into the light, Lee is there to remind you to stand your ground, right? To, um, to know that you are worthy of, uh, being in that light, right? And worthy to be acknowledged. Okay, I'm gonna leave this right here. And so let's get into the meat of the reading. I've already shuffled these and cleansed these and spent some time with them thinking about those who might show up for this reading. And I ask that my ancestors, my guardians, my guides, angels, archangels, and the light to give us guidance on what would be really helpful for healing wounded healers to consider, to hear, to help them find balance and harmony on their current healing journey. So the first card is, uh, grounded in the idea of acceptance. We pulled the healing card. Second card is grounded in intuition and knowledge. Dynamics of identity. Third card is freedom. And this is engage abundance. Fourth card is wisdom. Engage slowing down. Fifth card is wholesome, uh, wholeness and connection. Imagine sowing seeds of choice and free will. Sixth card is go slow. Look up and look down. Seventh card, imagine you are worthy. Eighth card, release assumptions. Ninth card, explore and release your limiting beliefs. Tenth card, investigate letting go of ways of being that no longer serve you. I'm trying to put these just in the place that will allow the energy to flow correctly. Eleventh card, 
Investigate healing processes and healing opportunities. And that is clarity. Twelfth card is wellness and light. Center integrity. And our thirteenth card, self-love and strength. Release defensiveness. Hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and read the cards in the energetic order of the fruit of life. It starts with one and it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I like to think of it very much like a spiral. So think like this energy goes up, comes to the center point. So in that, uh, in the idea of the, the acceptance, I am, it also is holding, uh, root chakra, uh, energy. We have the journey card healing. So seek and foster physical, spiritual, energetic transformation. This makes me think that perhaps along your healing journey, um, that, you could benefit from some very specific work in the root chakra. So, um, you know, what are you, what are you considering around your ideas of, of, of safety, stability, your existence, um, where you're, how powerful, how worthy you think you are. And perhaps that maybe in that there is some, healing, uh, that you can focus some of your energy of your healing journey right now can be focused around your root chakra. And so, you know, how are you finding, um, balance in seeking and then fostering your physical, spiritual, and energetic tr transformation from your root, right? From your, 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 your feet up. Which leads us to um, intuition and knowledge. So what can help bring balance and harmony to your healing journey at this time around your intuition and knowledge? And the card that was pulled is called Dynamics of Identity around conscious choices. It's one of two Dynamic of Identity cards. And conscious choices is around claim your eye right? Making you a creation of your design. And the idea is to engage in that process. So maybe, um, I'm getting the sense that perhaps spending more time and really getting clear, uh, in terms of who you are, right? It's almost like the essence of transmuting the eye around, um, lifting, changing, shifting the veil of oppression, suppression, and control on, uh, on from the, the external oppression, uh, the external exertion of oppression, suppression, and control on your eye, um, allowing you to do some work on really getting clear on who you are, not who maybe you've been told you could be, or should be not who you were. If you are a healing wounded healer, it's a journey, right? And so identity is not set in stone. Identity is, it grows and changes with us as we grow and change. So if you're on a healing journey, it's really important to, you know, reassess from time to time what's working and what's not working. Cause um, if you, if you need more understanding about identity and how this construct oppression, suppression, and control uses, um, very specific identities and identity identities that we've been trained to really f lean into. So like race, ethnicity, language, geography, education, sexuality, um, you know, dot, 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 um, it's, there's a video on my channel called Unbinding Identity, which can walk you through that. And so, um, intuition and knowledge, right? Doing the work to sort of figure out, 
Am I making my eye a creation of my own design? And where is it a creation of those around me and what works and what doesn't work about that, right? And finding balance in um, the process, right? Because that balance is what's going to sort of help you with the healing. We started with healing, the healing of your process, the healing of who you are is going to help you claim your eye and engage in the idea of making you a creation of your own design. And that flows into this idea of freedom, right? What is freedom? And we pulled the card to remember to engage abundance, um, and so I think at this early stage in the reading, I'm wondering if it's going to start flowing, it's going to come back to that. But right now I think, um, the idea is as you are in the healing process and you are claiming your eye to engage this idea of abundance, the sky's the limit, get out of the box, right? Get out of the box and the way that you're going to get out of the box, that identity, can create in an oppressive, suppressive, and controlling environment is to seek and foster the, the transformation that you're on. So just really hold that healing front and center and that the possibilities abound on, on what you can engage to get clarity around who you are and the choices you're making. Uh, and after, you know, engaging abundance, we're moving into some wisdom. What are some ideas to, what is an idea to engage as you're on this path is engage slowing down. This is huge right now in our current society and like the false sense of urgency that uh, oppression, suppression, and control uh, is using to oppress, suppress, and control our experiences of reality is, is quite intense. And so the wisdom here is, um, remember the wisdom of slowing down, of being able to, you know, slow down enough to engage in abundance, to see one, one, you might need to slow down so that you can see the plethora of choices that are before you, right? To an e to even be conscious of the choices you're making and what is creating healing for you and what is not. And as you're doing this, as you're, you're engaging the slowdown, looking into wholeness and connection, imagine sowing seeds of choice and free will. So starting to cultivate this idea that in slowing down and knowing that I can engage in abundance, particularly abundance in the ideas of who I am, who I want to be, making that a creation of your own design, in that process, you're starting to sow seeds of choice and free will. And you wanna cultivate, like imagine what that is uh, particularly as a wound, as a healing wounded healer, we, some folks, you're going to need to imagine it because it's not necessarily the path you were born into, right? If you're a healing wounded healer, uh, for some folks, you were born into a path, um, that choice and free will almost feels like a lie. And so, uh, slowing down enough, moving in the idea of abundance, you can start imagining, what does it mean to plant seeds of choice and free will as I'm on this healing journey? Uh, now it's interesting because there's two cards here for six is empowerment, sovereignty, autonomy. Like what can you engage to find balance in, in your understanding of, of, of sovereignty and autonomy on your healing journey. And this came in as go slow look up and look down. So again, engage this idea of slow down, slow down. I also just got this thought of like, you know, you're on a really beautiful, intense healing journey. Remember and have faith in divine timing. So sometimes, uh, the journey to healing, we, you know, we can feel really impatient because we just want it to happen now. And I think that's fair. Um, and for an, you know, for wounded healers, for he healing wounded healers, there is something to be said to slow down enough to give yourself time to assess, to understand, 
Um, what do I need, right, to be able to actually engage abundance? Again, I think the the path for many wounded, healing wounded healers, the path of healing, um, you know, it, abundance is not necessarily something uh, you might be super familiar with, hence uh, wounded healer reality. And so we're going to have to slow down enough to look up and look down, meaning what's above me, what's coming, what's behind me, what's below me. Um, wh- you know, it could be both what's behind me and what do I want to release? Um, look up what's above me. What do I want to let in? What abundance possibilities? Um, the look down could also be just to help you remember you've got earth, you got earth beneath you. I think as a healing wounded healer, um, it becomes really important to remember the connection, power, support that earth desires to be for us and is, it desires us to remember it. Now in this reading, we opened with the healing card, right? We opened with the, with, um, the healing card, which is, uh, the root chakra. Um, the placement of this card, number one is around root chakra stuff. And so there might be a connection and seeing the energy here, there's definitely a flow of energy between, um, healing and the healing that needs to happen at your root chakra level, uh, and going slow, go slow and, and trust that you're in the process. You're in the healing process. As you're doing that, it's going to become really important, um, for your understanding of your image of yourself your desires, your creativity flow to cultivate the idea that you are worthy to really imagine that, which again, like, look, you know, the energy is flowing this way as well to the root chakra card. Um, and that's, uh, where some of our most deepest beliefs around our worthiness are, um, hiding, or are out shining bright (laughs) wherever you are on that spectrum. And so imagine again, what I said about imagining sowing the seeds of choice and free will, which is really beautiful because see here, the energy is flowing from here quite easily into this other cultivating card where it's asking you on your journey to imagine you are worthy, right? And as you're imagining you are worthy, you're going to be sowing seeds of choice and free will. Okay. In the process of imagining that you're worthy, a thing that might really help you as it flows in is to release assumptions. Release assumptions is it's a being card. It's very much about being curious. It's very much about asking questions. And I think for the healing wounded healer, it becomes really important to ask a lot of questions because, um, you might find yourself getting stuck in what was and, um, the, the pain, the depth of what was. And also actually I just had this thought of like, for some folks, there was never a space to be curious, right? Whatever your situation, well, not whatever. Some folks have been, were, and are in situations where, um, it didn't feel safe to be curious, Um, and as I say that I looked down and I saw the, the, your healing card is right next to this release assumptions, which is, you know, the more we spend time healing that root chakra, understanding we're all worthy, we can move into this idea that I get to be curious. And in that curiosity, I can release assumptions. And in that release of assumptions, I'm starting to learn what is, what, you know, what this healing journey is about. What do I need to see? What do I need to know, um, to bring balance and harmony to my, to, to my journey, um, and to this healing process. And this is a number eight card. It's the inner strength card. And so I, I think that remembering that you can find strength in being curious that, you know, assum- making assumptions are easy and they often lead to a lack of clarity, a lack of transparency, a lack of vulnerability. These are all ways of being that work within the construct of oppression, suppression, and control. And when we're on our healing journey, we want to, um, consider 
draw in ways that release us from that oppression, suppression, and control, right? Release us from that energy. And so releasing assumptions, moving into curiosity is going to help us do that. And from there, um, the ninth card is all about uh, areas of forgiveness and divinity. Um, and so this idea that you are connected to a larger sense of yourself and through forgiveness, you can access um, more of that higher self. Uh, the card pulled for that is an exploring card and it's asking you to explore and release your limiting beliefs, which is really connected to releasing assumptions, right? Um, because when we start asking more questions, when we start getting more curious, we can start seeing the places where when I'm living in assumptions, often it's based in a belief. Um, and does that belief work for me? Or is that belief limiting my ability to engage abundance, which it's kind of the energy is kind of moving there here to here. I don't know if you can see that card in the camera, but from, um, card nine to card three and card three was engage abundance, right? So exploring and releasing those limited beliefs is going to help you, um, in this whole process. But actually when we go through up here at three, if you started in to engage the abundance, right, that energy is starting to flow and it's coming up. And by the time you've thought about, okay, all oh, possibilities, so many possibilities abound, right? So some things that I believe in could be true and maybe there's more that's true. Maybe it's not true. Maybe I don't need to believe in that. Right. And you're doing that by slowing down. You're imagining the choice and free will available to you. You're getting reminded to go slow, look up and look down. Imagine that you're worthy, release assumptions, which all of these things support you to explore and release the limiting beliefs that, um, that, likely are, are in my experience are sort of like the root of the root of the root of the healing that, um, is necessary. And, and, and in my experience of being a wounded healer, the limiting beliefs are definitely, uh, root, 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 and they're nuanced <laughs> and they're the, the more intellectual one is the more nuanced those limiting beliefs are. And the more work we have to do to release assumptions and imagine that we're worthy of something bigger and going slow to do that so that we can actually see what's at play here is a limiting belief, right? Um, which I love is it moves in truth and choices, the 10th card, such it's so closely related to limiting beliefs, investigate, letting go of ways of being that no longer serve you. So that's the integration here. We're exploring and releasing your limiting beliefs. So as you explore and you release those limiting beliefs, we move into integrating, integrate, letting go of the ways that no longer serve you. So those limiting beliefs that you've brought in by being curious and you're being curious because you know, you're worthy to be curious and you're, uh, you're, you're imagining your worthiness because you're slowing down enough to see the bullshit that is this construct. So investigate, letting go of the ways of being that no longer serve you. You're integrating the learnings from exploring and releasing your limiting beliefs as you investigate and let go of the ways of being that no longer serve you. Uh, you might want to seek some clarity in terms of, um, investigating healing processes and healing opportunities. So what I'm getting from that is, you know, I've mentioned this, the healing journey is never ending for wounded healers because that's part of the path. If you identify as a wounded healer, you know, that's, um, many of us have experienced multiple levels and in intensity, uh, beyond the average of trauma. And so as we're letting go, as we are releasing limiting beliefs, right. And letting go of ways of being that no longer serve where you are, there's an adjustment. We have to sometimes, you know, it might mean finding another modality of healing in addition to what, where I'm at, or I'm, you know, like for example, um, for the longest time, I sensed that I needed to do some sort of somatic work to help me w in my healing process, but I was really resistant to it. I was living in this limiting belief that, um, I could not let a stranger touch my body. And so I, I 
um, did the work that I needed to do through talk therapy, um, through finding, I did research to find, um, energy, people who held energy that I thought I could do work with, um, and found people that I could talk to about why I'm getting somatic work. Right. So I let go of this idea that I'm just not somebody who can, um, do massage, right. Can have people touch my body and investigated, um, investigated what does that mean? Um, and how do I do that? Right. So this is not going to be true for everyone. Um, and like, you need to really discern, like hold true to where you are in your journey. If you're not ready for something like somatic work, then you're not ready. That's okay. That's totally okay. You are still loved wholly, completely, and fully by the divine. For folks who are ready to integrate it, investigate, you know, what type of person do you need? Do you need them to be a particular gender? Do they need to do certain things? Like I needed them to be, um, identify as a woman. I needed them to have an understanding of, of my, um, desires to be in somatic work that also included very clear spiritual aspects of what it means to be that vulnerable and the energies that can show up and the, understand that my ancestors are going to show up with me to protect me. Right. Um, and so in that investigation, I was able to find some really amazing, um, body workers. Right. Um, and so you might be at that point, integrate that you might also, it might be, you know, healing opportunities. It could be, you've always wanted to go hiking, but for some reason you had this limiting belief that you can't go hiking. You're just not made for that, right? Other people go hiking. Well, investigate letting go of that. If, and, and, um, because that may no longer serve you, like being out in nature, in the woods, um, might serve you and be a healing opportunity. Right. And like, sometimes people think, well, I need to go hiking and to hike for four miles. And you know, physically I can't do that. Look, you know, you can go hike for a third of a mile. You can go hike for five minutes. <laughs> like you decide, right. You decide, release assumptions on what hiking is, right. Release limiting beliefs on your ability to do that. You know, and if you have uh, issues around that, depending on where you live, you can do investigate, you know, are there, um, accessible hiking situations or opportunities or just ways to be outside in nature. Okay. It would leads us once we're investigating healing processes and healing, um, opportunities throughout our healing, um, journey, cause they're going to shift and change. Um, wellness and light. We start moving into wellness and light and spirit is offering that, um, a thing to do at this point is to center integrity. So center integrity in terms of you're doing all this work, you're in this process and commit to it, right? What does it mean for you to commit to it? Even when it gets hard, maybe you're, you know, you might be investigating, um, opportunities, healing opportunities. And you're just not finding what you need or what you want, or, you know, you find a modality, uh, you find a person and then the, and then the person isn't exactly what you need. Understand that this isn't linear. This is a spiral. So, you know, energy is going to flow where it needs to flow. Remember that you are worthy to commit to yourself and center your integrity in terms of this journey that you're on. And even, even as you center that integrity, it doesn't mean you just keep moving no matter what, maybe your investigation is not going the way you want to go. So go slow, slow down, look up, look down what's before you, what's holding you. Right. And right next to center integrity, energy is flowing over here, sowing seeds of choice and free will. So remember, even when it's tough, we're going to commit to our healing journey. Cause if you identify as a healing wounded healer, um, there's a, there's a, there's a way in which we want to be of service to others. We want to be of support to others, but we want to find the balance of like, how do we do that and do less harm to ourselves and to other people. And so seeing that we have choice and free will can help in that commitment and centering our integrity to our journey of healing, right? I am committed to my journey of healing so that I can be supportive to other people. Because if we don't step into our healing, there's a chance that we can be harmful to others. 
right? And so we want to be mindful of that. And then we move into uh, self-love and strength. And this is actually, uh, this would be a, the heart chakra um, area. And the card that was pulled is a sense of being, the being of transmuting. And it's another release card, release defensiveness, release defensiveness. So that tells me, um, definitely, you know, it seems for me, it's very much a heart, a heart kind of heart work, heart chakra work around strength and self-love and understanding that, um, when we imagine that we're worthy, right. And we're doing our healing and we're starting to get clarity on who we are in our own eye. Um, there could be a process of like, I'm doing all this work. I'm doing all this healing. I'm the shit. I know what I'm doing. And when someone engages us in a way that we don't particularly understand, or, um, we're not necessarily being curious, we can get defensive and we can shut our heart down. And the idea is to release that defensiveness. It's right next to releasing the assumptions, right? And it's the strength card. Uh, this is inner strength and this is strength through the heart, uh, self-love. So learning to decipher on the healing journey, um, where can I, uh, find balance and harmony between hearing other aspects? Cause I also, I just got this idea of like, sometimes on our healing journeys, it feels so good when we, you know, those moments where, you know, you've healed something and there's a shift, right? You, it, there could be a shift physically in yourself, or there's a shift for those who are on a spiritual journey, you start seeing synchronicities, um, or certain people are coming into your life. Right. And it's really beautiful. And that feeling, um, we can get really attached to, and then we're doing work in which we want to be of service to others. So we're coming into contact with other people's reality and other people's perspectives. And it kind of feels like it's infringing on our own. That's when you want to really release defensiveness, release assumptions, be curious about, um, the newness that's coming in. Right. And, um, I would say be curious as well as have the boundaries, right? Because I think defensiveness is again, because there's a part that is trying to protect you. Like the ego comes out, um, and is like, whoa, Nelly, like, you know, so, okay. Like that's okay. Be curious, release that defensiveness and, uh, ask questions, right? Uh, dig into the fact that you are on a healing journey. You're doing the healing. You are sending your integrity of like, this is who I am. I'm a transmuter. I'm moving through, um, the different layers of reality to get to my authentic self. I know that I'm worthy, so I don't need to be defensive. Right. And that's really interesting that the worthy card is right beneath the release defensive card. The more you understand your worthiness, the more you can release defensiveness because it doesn't really matter what anybody else says or do when you claim your eye, right? You're making you a creation of your own design. I just want to take a moment to kind of see energetically anything else that I'm seeing on here. I mean, like even right here, this line of energy that's coming through here, healing, right? So seek and foster physical, spiritual, energetic transformation on your healing journey. What are you, the healing, consider that the healing you are seeking right now, this is going to be for some folks, the healing that you're seeking right now is going to be around releasing assumptions releasing defensiveness. You're going to have to investigate healing processes and healing opportunities in order to do that, that healing work. And the, and the suggestion is, is to engage slowing down. Perhaps right now you're really busy. You're moving really fast. Um, and the only way that you're really going to stop and investigate those processes or opportunities around 
where your defensiveness is coming from, where your assumptions are coming from to, to seek that healing is to slow down. So for some folks who have arrived, I'm looking at this line of energy here. So let's say your healing journey is around abundance. You're really trying to open, to release ideas of scarcity and engage abundance. And so the suggestion is going to be um, investigate letting go of ways of being that no longer serve you. Because that's going to, if I'm really stuck in... Um, the things that are not helping me, it makes it really hard for me to see abundance. It makes me, you know, um, it, 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 when I start investigating, what can I let go of to make room for more? That's going to help me engage in abundance, abundance a little bit more in terms of investigating ways that no longer serve you. A starting point could be to release defensiveness. And in order to release defensiveness, imagine that you're worthy. And as you're in your imaginings of being of worthiness, go slow. And for this line, the look up is like, you are the universe. Go outside and look up at night. You are the universe. You are so big, even though you might feel really small. And then look down. The earth is holding you. You're still standing. You're still here or you're sitting or you're um, whatever your um, physical state is. You're still here here earth is holding you let's look at this line of energy so for this one this line of energy coming down here it starts with dynamics of identity conscious choices so claim your eye making you a creation of your design. One of the ways in terms of um, engaging that would be to explore and release your limiting beliefs, right? And exploring your, releasing your limiting beliefs is definitely gonna help you claim your I because your limiting beliefs are set by the construct, oppressive suppression and control construct. And as you start shifting, changing, altering your interaction, your your understanding of that energy, you can start claiming your eye and making yourself a creation of your own design. Again, it comes back to one of the ways to do that is release defensiveness. The release defensiveness, release the idea that you have to defend yourself um, in on your healing journey. Pull in the parts of yourself that um, are creating sort of that defensive stance and let them know that we're on a healing journey, right? We're going to center our integrity. We know who we, we know who we want to be, because if you're still trying to figure out, claim your I, you know, you want to be on this journey. You know, you want to be on this journey. So center that, that commitment, center that um, idea, that choice by sowing seeds of of choice and free will. You get to decide who your eye is. Oh, I love that, right? You get to decide you have choice and free will on who your eye is. And the way that you can do that, release limiting beliefs, explore, sorry, explore and release your limiting beliefs, release defensiveness, center your integrity as you're doing that. Commit to it, you know, with compassion and love, but commit to it, what that means to you. Nobody else matters. You have no reason to be defensive. Nobody else matters. It's just you. I'm trying to see. Let's see. Anything else? Anything else, Spirit, that I should see and say for folks who are here? Yeah. Remember, you've got Leah and Amaratsu holding space with you. You're not alone in this. Holding energy. Their, their energy is here with you as you're walking through this, you know, this spiral circle of your healing journey. So I'm going to close us out with two more cards. One of Animal Healing Oracle. And just what animal energy you can lean into as you engage your current 
healing. There we go. We got the coyote. The coyote. So throat chakra, which is really beautiful because I feel like the throat chakra goes really well with Leah. Um, the energy that we read around Leah, stand your ground. And Amaratu, no more hiding. You were on a really beautiful healing journey. And so um, as you're doing this work, you have two cards that are about slowing down. And the coyote card is stillness. And it's from the throat chakra. Um, so I know that Amarasu is like, you know, shine, come out of your cave, but you can come out of your cave slowly <laughs> or when you come out of your cave, you don't have to run around. It doesn't have to be frenetic. You don't have to be, um, all over the place. Right. Uh, and so the coyote card stillness takes some time to rest and reconnect with your inner voice. Beautiful healing thing to do. Be still and listen. What is your inner wisdom revealing to you? So I definitely, I was going to say before the card popped out, it popped out before I finished, is that I like to pull these cards as sort of um, as a means to know what you can lean into, given all the information that just came out of the cards. And so when I think about this specific to what we talked about here, it's like, what is your in, inner wisdom revealing to you, right? So I started with saying, discern what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and also like, what this might be, you know, the messages that came out from me for you, you know, you don't necessarily need to take them super literally. It could be that they just spark your inner wisdom, right? So take, take some time to rest and reconnect with your inner voice. Um, be still and listen. What is your inner wisdom revealing to you? And we're going to close with a couple of actually three, because I like the number three, uh, affirmation cards to consider. You can consider all three. You can take two. You can take one that really speaks to you. This is from the moon magic. These are called moon magic, deep moon messages, moon magic, deep moon messages. Uh, on my healing journey, um, being in deep relationship with the moon and the moon phases has been, um, uh, has been my, has been, has been my healing process. Like it has just offered me so much healing. Um, so I want to share that with y'all. Let's see. I'm going to take three. Actually, I'm going to take this one and this one and this one. First one is I can guide and lead others wisely and with love. What a beautiful card for a wounded, a healing wounded healer. So that's kind of what we want to do, right? We want to guide and lead others. And I can guide and lead others wisely and with love. That's moon goddess Hina. H-I-N-A. Second affirmation or mantra you can consider is I teach people how to treat me. Ashe. Yes. I teach people how to treat me. That to me is over here. Release assumptions, right? Release assumptions. This energy right here, almost like a triangle of sorts. Release assumptions, release defensiveness, explore and release your limiting beliefs, right? People don't necessarily need to be able to read your mind. I can teach people how to treat me, which releases assumptions that I'm assuming they know how to treat me. I don't have to get defensive. Um, when, um, they move in a way that doesn't work for me because I can teach them and then I can release any limiting beliefs that I might hold about how to deal with people, um, who don't treat me well, right. Particularly after I've treat, I've, I've tried to teach them what, how to treat me. And then the last is, I am curious about my true nature. I seek to understand myself, which I love. It's right here, center integrity, right? I am curious about my true nature. I seek to understand myself. Wonderful. I hope that you found this helpful, useful, that you, again, discernment is key here. Take what works, leave what doesn't for someone else. Take bits, pieces, a sentence, the whole thing. Use it to 
help you find balance and harmony on your uh, healing journey. I think for everyone, healing is in this current timeline is a never ending process. And particularly if we, um, how I'm defining a healing wounded healer, it becomes really, really, really important to understand that healing never ends and that I get to shift, move, change the exertion of oppression, suppression of control I am experiencing from the outside and from the inside. And that's the healing journey ever evolving. I want to thank, um, ancestors, guides, guardians, angels in the light who showed up, uh, to hang out with us. Thank you, Leah and Amaratsu. Thank you, Coyote. Thank you, Moon. Thank you healing wounded healer. May you find your path, uh, continue the path. If you found your path, may you find compassion, grace, and love. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Please. If you found this helpful, interesting, useful, please like the video, please subscribe. That way you will be told when I have new content coming out. And if you know someone who you feel could really be supported by this content, please share it with them and deepen your relationship. Let them know that you were thinking of them and you're sharing. Do it in a transmuted way. Don't tell them. I think you're so messed up and this content would help you. <laughs> no, you can just share and be like, Hey, I thought you might like this or, Hey, I thought this would be supportive. I found this really supportive. Check it out. That kind of thing is my suggestion. You have free will and choice. You can do whatever, but definitely say go the transmuted route. Anyway, uh, thank you. So I think the care bear said this and it maybe makes it a little trite, but whatevs. Sharing is caring. So please share. Unfettered and infinite love and gratitude.